Hi, Deborah Vogler here, reporting from CONFAB 2011 in Las Vegas. My guest is Raj Jami of Semitech. Thank you for doing this. Thank you, Deborah. All right. Now, you're at, now obviously, we're doing this in advance of mm -hmm. your presentation, but you will be presenting the comprehensive outline of the trade offs with respect to non planar device scaling. Could you highlight the most significant issues? The significant issues are for the first time we'll be going to 3D devices mm -hmm. as opposed to making planar devices, mm -hmm. which has its own set of challenges in terms of conformality of the gate dielectric, conformality of the contacts, and in addition to that, that also requires us to go back and look at the design aspects of the whole thing. So there is planar planarity issues, there is design related issues, and then there is the question of how do we make all these in a robust yielding fashion in a three dimensional way. What are the biggest challenges that remain to be solved in getting 3D TSVs ready for high volume manufacturing? The 3D TSVs, um, if you look at the entire flow of the 3D TSV technology today, there are significant gaps in getting it to high volume manufacturing. So the, these significant gaps are potentially um, all across the entire flow. <laughs> and I, I, no, no, there's nothing, there's no one or two that are the most uh, critical? I, I, would, I would probably point to some critical areas. Um, one of them would be bonding and debonding. Okay. I think that's, that's something that everybody in the industry is focused because the throughput of that mm -hmm. is, not, um, is not where it needs to be. And there are issues with, uh, with regards to the, the robustness of the materials, the stress that these different uh, technologies would introduce, thinning issues. So every area needs to be um, improved from where it is today. So. Now what are some of the future opportunities for SOCs and SIPs going mm -hmm. forward and how will 3.5 materials and 3D technologies contribute? Right, I, I think we are sitting on the verge of some significant changes coming up in the future. Not only for SOC technologies mm -hmm. where um, by bringing different and disparate elements that typically we would have different chips come together onto a single mm -hmm. die, we would be improving functionality of a given chip. So you would have an entire cell phone with, uh, with all the, the logic functionalities that we have today, uh, an intelligent smart cell phone in one chip potentially. But on the other hand, you can think of adding additional features and putting them into packages. So not only do you have an SOC that enables something, but you are also looking at the potential of introducing, uh, uh, let's say, a huge quantity of memory mm -hmm. or um, an additional feature involving perhaps um, uh, MEMS technology that would enable additional functions. Mm -hmm. And those kind of technologies cannot typically be integrated onto a single die today. And those that can be will be put into uh, an SOC and in terms of uh, technologies that need to be integrated on a, on this, on a separate die mm -hmm. will probably come into an SIP version. So we are looking at, uh, we are looking at uh, 3D technology enabling all this in the near future. Moving on to the roadmaps, mm -hmm. what, in a nutshell, what do they look like for logic and memory over the next few years? I think the, uh, the logic technologies are looking at, uh, of course, moving towards three-dimensionality, but they're also looking at how do they get the fundamental performance improved. Mm -hmm. And the fundamental performance improvement comes from strain application. So mm -hmm. how do we apply strain on non-planar devices and also continue to add mobility enhancement or injection velocity enhancement through uh, use of high mobility channel materials like 3.5s mm -hmm. or germanium um, in these devices. And I think in the longer run, we'd be looking at how do we reduce the overall power consumption. And that requires us to lower the operating voltages of these devices. And on the um, uh, memory side, I think the direction is three-dimensionality mm -hmm. and simpler devices. So today we have flash memory, for example going from conventional floating gate devices mm -hmm. to uh, charge trap flash devices and three-dimensional stacking. But um, I think in the very near future, we are looking into an opportunity where these could be replaced by um, new emerging memory technologies like resistive RAMs, which are simple cross-point devices. And also, we're looking at um, uh, spin torque transfer mm -hmm. RAMs, which are potentially replacements for um, some of the DRAM technologies all, all, and also for SRAM technologies in logic uh, as an embedded cache. So the, the, the field is exploring with new options that are out there. <laughs> and incumbent technologies are also growing at the same time and they're getting much more sophisticated. Well, sounds like you have a lot of work uh, ahead absolutely, of you. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. All right.